Okay, thank you for joining us. <clears throat> My name is Ryan Priori. I'm the technology manager at Thorlab Spectral Works. And today I'll be talking to you about real-time spectroscopy via multivariate optical computing. I'll tell you a little bit about Thorlab Spectral Works and who we are and what we do. Uh, then I'll uh, turn it over to some multivariate calibration, talk specifically about the multivariate optical element platform, uh, and then close with some MOE-based examples. Today, ultimately, I want to convey to you the power of multivariate optical computing and how this spectroscopic tool is enab enables a simple photometer device to achieve comparable sensitivity and specificity to laboratory instrumentation and doing this in near real time. So Thorlab Spectral Works, um, we're part of Thorlabs. Thorlabs is a vertically integrated photonics products manufacturer. We are located in Columbia, South Carolina, and we actually entered into the organization uh, when we were acquired. We were formerly Certimo, <clears throat> and now we joined the Thorlabs family. Uh, we produce a variety of photonics-based products at TSW, application-specific sensors via the multivariate optical element platform, which I'll be talking about today. We also produce diffractive optical elements, micro-optics and micro-reticles via uh, what we call the MAG-assemble technology. There's also traditional uh, reticles and optics, uh, which we use photolithography and reactive ion etching, as you can see um, a variety of these examples in the lower portion of the screen. So the MOE technology I'm going to talk about today actually has an interesting commercialization history already. Uh, the first demonstration um, and uh, the first publication about it was in 1998, demonstrated in 2001, and in 2004, a company called Ometric was founded to commercialize this technology. Uh, later in 2012, Halliburton Energy Services had acquired Ometric specifically for the use in the oil and gas industry, and shortly after that, in 2013, a uh, new company, Certima, was formed uh, and was seeking commercialization for all of those applications outside of the oil and gas uh, space. Thorlabs, as I mentioned, did acquire Certima in 2019, uh, in which we became Thorlab Spectral Works. In the bottom portion of this slide, you can see uh, images of the first actual example um, of the, uh, of, of the um, MOE, and then some inline process control-based instrumentation that came out of the company Ometric. Later, some uh, the integrated computational element or Halliburton's um, naming for the MOE technology uh, in their filter wheel configuration, and an example of a mosaic based imager that was developed during the time of Certima. So, let's talk about some measurements. <clears throat> in a real world measurement, um, we are never really given just the pure analyte. We have that particular spectroscopic measurement that we're making if we're using these photonics-based tools, but it's always in the presence of some interference, and it's really the combination at this point of analyte or the signal, the interference, and the noise that we are um, attempting to measure. So our challenge is to dig this analytical signal out um, of, this, uh, of this spectroscopic noise. Now, if we use tools such as multivariate calibration, uh, and just in this simulated example here, let's say we had two species that would be of interest, and I'm going to measure the blue species. Um, if we have some uncorrelated interfering spectroscopic species, such as something illustrated in red, when we look at mixtures of these samples, if we choose a subset of this spectroscopic um, measurements, we can actually generate a calibration. But you'll notice as I rotate this cube around, there's actually a particular direction in space in which we see a nice linear correlation of that analytical signal, even though there is this uncorrelated interfering spectroscopic species. We're able to achieve this because there's a particular direction in space in which we can um, think of these, spec these spectra as vectors, and we are applying a type of pattern-based uh, approach to this spectroscopic data set. So there's a position in space in which this vector is able to accentuate the signal even in the presence of the interfering species. As we develop these type of multivariate regression patterns, you can start thinking of these as really a translation mechanism. Via a calculation called the dot product, we can measure a spectrum 
And by taking the dot product by multiplying this vector with the regression vector, we can yield a scalar product. And as future spectra are, me are measured, and we apply this regression vector, we can yield the output of this analytical signal that we care about um, as quickly as we can generate that um, the spectral information on the front end. Now, the spectra contain a wealth of information. And in a simple example, in a previous slide, I only chose three wavelengths, but it's really a multitude of these wavelengths that we are utilizing or variables in order to construct these types of models. When we look at a series of optical spectra, or as we take this to larger examples such as hyperspectral imaging, it's a wealth of information that we are looking to then process into these final uh, predictive measurements that we care about. Now, the multibrite optical element, it's an optical equivalent of this dot product calculation. It is a wide band pass optical filter in which we have embedded a specific spectroscopic pattern that is able to detect that key analytical signal of interest. We can um, break the, the, the measurement of, uh, of this optical dot product down into really two steps. You can think of um, the first portion of this dot product as a multiplication step. We can multiply the discrete wavelength intensities of the, um, of the filter and the system to the spectrum of interest. So as the light coming from our sample, as we see in X1, passes through our MOE, we've effectively multiplied it by either a penalty or some value between zero and one. If we take all of those wavelengths now and simultaneously throw it onto a broadband bandpass detector, we're going to yield a detected result, which is going to be correlated with the sum of all of those wavelengths simultaneously. So that multiplication in addition step comprise the components of this dot product calculation. Now, not just any spectral curve will yield the result that we care about, and that is what is so unique and special about this multibrite optical element. This specific shape and curvature now represents some mathematical pattern that we have embedded into the transmission profile of this optical filter. So now by placing it into a simple optical system with a light source and a detector and the necessary optics in between, this optical element is able to provide a very powerful measurement, application specific measurement for that one analyte or class of measurements uh, in real time. Now, we can utilize this in optical uh, configurations from a beam splitter to a filter photometer, to even to a snapshot array configuration. And there are pros and cons as to you know, where we would make those um, selections for uh, incorporating it, which is a bit beyond the scope of the talk today. But more importantly, how do we actually encode a signal uh, once we have this optical filter inside of uh, that particular instrument. We can use the transmission, the reflection, both, a reference filter uh, in order to construct this type of multivariate um, uh, pattern that we're seeking. In this example, we're using both the transmission and the reflection portions of that optical filter as it's positioned in a 45 degree configuration or a beam splitter configuration. And by taking the transmission minus the reflection that's essentially the optical weighting of that MOE, that intensity result is essentially going to be correlated with the concentration or classification of the sample that we're interested in. To be clear, MOEs are not narrow band pass filters. They are constructed using the same materials in the same process, but a narrow band pass filter is just that. It's narrow, it only lets that one or very um, small range of wavelengths through with a high out of band rejection ratio. Multivariate optical element is a wide band pass filter. We let in all of that light and it's the specific unique curvature and shape of that pattern um, that is, uh, is useful for our measurement. Typically you would use a series of narrow band pass filters, which would have a much lower optical throughput than one multivariate optical element. Let me walk through um, a couple examples here. This first one is an imaging based example and I'll hit more of the details of how we design an MOE. And then I will close with some um, inline based measurements um, from our past. 
So when we look into define the application at hand, this particular one is for an imaging based application. We would collect a series of, uh, of spectra associated with both the analyte and any of the components that would be within the same scene. This was an example that we would use for um, demos um, at a trade show, uh, but also relevant for detecting uh, explosive precursors. So ammonium nitrate being the target and other white powders from sugar to urea to Splenda to um, just uh, salt itself. Once we've generated the spectroscopic library, the second component of the MOE system uh, are all of the optical components that go within that device from the light source, the detector, and all of the optical elements in between. You can think of an MOE system as a holistic measurement of the system itself. So in the end, we have a radiometric power meter for the analyte that we've designed this system for. So in this example, we have the transmission spectra of the short pass, long pass filters, a light source based on a simulated uh, black body radiator for solar illumination, a camera, and then an actual objective or a, a focal lens. The way we design these, this is really the secret sauce. Um, we can take the input uh, radiometric package of the instrument combined with the spectroscopic profile of those uh, the analyte we care about as well as interfering species. And then we optimize the shape of this transmission filter. And we are seeking a particular uh, weighted result in this figure of merit. So we're looking to generate filters that give us the best performing result for the application. And in this example, it's how well can we discriminate the target analyte of ammonium nitrate in the presence of any of those other white powders. We can construct the equation. This is a two MOE based system is how we designed this um, for use um, and any of the necessary um, components for the optimization. Modeling the thin film interference is pretty straightforward. Um, but when you wrap in a figure of merit based on an application specific measurement at hand, that's really the secret sauce, as I mentioned previously. But this is um, basic uh, modeling for us based on how we intend to fabricate the filter with the substrate and the low and high index materials. In the end, we had two MOE candidates that were selected for this and fabricated using dielectrics on a BK7 substrate. Um, this particular optical computation, the fact that we're subtracting the two intensities and dividing by the sum also gives us some intrinsic area normalization across the image. And what does this actually look like? The left side, top left is the bright field reflectance images with each of the samples identified over top. The center image is how we produced models using five narrow band pass filters to generate a predictive model and false color overlay now where the red indicates the presence of the ammonium nitrate. And then the far right image is that same measurement now using only two MOEs in order to discriminate the ammonium nitrate in the presence of those uh, other white powders. The key takeaway here is that with these two MOE measurements, we were able to um, reduce the number of measurements required from five to two, but also gaining three to four orders of magnitude of higher optical throughput through that measurement system. As we switch to some inline uh, measurement examples, we can measure solids, liquids, slurries, gases uh, in a variety of configurations um, and installation points. This is a representative view of a type of installation site where we would be connected either directly coupled to the production process or via fiber optic in a variety of environmental conditions from indoors to outdoors. So we did a lot of um, uh, pet nutrition measurements in the past, specifically moisture as well as fat and protein. But in this example of moisture, um, you know, the problem here is that low moisture leads to kibble breaking in the bag as well as lost revenue since the moisture itself is one of the less, least expensive ingredients in the food product. But however, high moisture leads to spoilage and mold formation in the bag. What you see in the top plot is just a series of measurements after the initial installation to show that there was a routine production process that was below the target. Um, you know, it wasn't outside of the realm, but it was it was not at the control point or actually maximizing um, profitability based on the uh, water incorporation into the product. Post calibration, the bottom image, um, you know, typically customers then want to see well, how well does the real time measurement 
compared to the laboratory-based measurement. And we're showing here overlaid, although these are every two hours, you see a fee sample, which may not representative of the bulk, you do see an overall correlation, but that real-time information is giving you um, those initial trends that you would see in real time. We also looked at cornstarch um, in a powdered sugar uh, plant or powdered, powdered sugar production process. In this example, what we were, you know, what we were able to see is that the routine lab measurement, specifically this was a turbidity measurement, was not able to detect the changes or the rapid change in the production process whenever one was relying on laboratory-based measurements at a defined interval. Um, so low cornstarch here would lead to clumping in the final and poor flow in the food product, where the high cornstarch would lead to a following of the actual final flavor. Um, so once again, you see the real-time performance uh, is adding quite a lot of value as compared to what would be measured from a laboratory-based measurement. So in conclusion, uh, though I walk through an imaging and non-imaging point detection-based applications, Multivariate optical computing is a spectroscopic tool which enables simple optical instruments to achieve a comparable sensitivity and specificity to laboratory instrumentation in near real time. The MOE is a wide bandpass thin film optical filter. It enables us to embed a spectroscopic pattern for a specific target analyte. And this MOE instrumentation can be employed for both imaging and point detection applications. And once again, looking for application specific measurements. So at this time, thank you for your attention, and I'd be happy to take any questions at this time. Thank you.